I was trying to think of something funny to say about today's excellent cocktail, but I couldn't crack it, so I don't have a good yolk for you. Hello and welcome to Intoxicated Masculinity. If it's Wednesday, we've got a cocktail video for you today. Um, this week, a lot of people around the world in the U.S. are celebrating Christmas or some other holiday, um, or perhaps you're celebrating nothing. And in that case, or in any case, you're going to want a cocktail in your hand when you're doing it. So I think the most appropriate cocktail to talk about this week is, of course, eggnog. Um, eggnog is a cocktail, and we're not going to get super into the history on this one. Uh, the history is long. It goes back a long ways. Basically, it starts off in Great Britain as a drink called either posset, or pochette, or pochette, or some other thing that I can't pronounce properly. Uh, basically, they would combine milk and add wine or beer to curdle it, um, and it just evolved over centuries to become what we know today as eggnog. Um, now, this cocktail is what we call a flip. We've seen cocktails in the past, sours, we've made sours where you're adding an, uh, an egg white, and that adds body to the cocktail. In a flip cocktail, you're adding the entire egg. Now, what this means for us, making the cocktails, we want to make sure we get a very, very vigorous uh, dry shake and wet shake. Uh, the dry shake is going to give the, the drink body, the wet shake is adding dilution and cooling, but what we're really doing is we want to make sure that egg is incorporated, because the last thing you want is unincorporated egg in your cocktail. Nobody will like that. So we're going to do this drink three ways. Uh, the first way is the difference guide. So Difference is a cocktail book that I like a lot. It's very simple. It's not super fancy dancy or anything like that. It's a very bare bones kind of, it's got, I don't even know how many recipes in there. Over 2,000 apparently. Um, and it will show you how to make the cocktails and give you a very, very simple and basic way to do the cocktail. And I think generally speaking, that way is a very good way of doing the cocktail and you'll get a great result from it. So that's where we're going to start off. Uh, the other one is I just got an email the other day from Lux Road, the person who makes Ezra Brooks, and they gave me their version of an eggnog. So we're going to try that. And finally, we're going to go to Cocktail Codex. Now, Cocktail Codex is put out by Death & Co, uh, which is a very, very famous bar. Um, and they have kind of a little bit more fancy version of an eggnog. We're going to try that. So we're going to see these three next to each other and see which one I like the best. So now that we know a little bit about how the cocktail is made, let's actually make it. All right, so we've still got all our ingredients up here. We're going to start off with the uh, Differs recipe. So the Differs is actually going pretty cognac heavy, more cognac heavy than Annika. So we're going to start off with two and a half ounces of our cognac. So this one will definitely warm you up. All right. Next, we're bringing in our heavy cream. And here we're just going to do half an ounce. And our sweetness here is primarily going to come from our simple. We're going to bring in a half an ounce of simple. And our egg. So everybody that does this will tell you the, the perfect way to crack an egg. I don't know the perfect way to crack an egg. Uh, as somebody who does baking in my spare time, I've always found just flat crack on the surface is the best way to do that. And then sometimes that just doesn't work. So you want to try and get no shells in there and not splash everything like I just did. Uh, if you do get a little shell in there, just give it to somebody you don't like. Finally, we're gonna go two ounces of milk. And as far as whether you're using whole milk uh, or whatever you're using, experiment around. Uh, I mean, your fat content's gonna bring flavor. Uh, now the real problem here with a dry shake. I've always said when you're shaking a cocktail, you don't really have to worry too much about really slamming your, your shakers together because the cold is going to hold it together. Or here, they're not going to because we don't have any cold in here. So you really want to be real careful. Give it a good smack on the end there. And now also, I'm using a, a, a Boston shaker with a um, with a pint glass instead of, it's, I'm just trying, I've got only got so many Boston shakers. There's nothing wrong with that. I've never heard of somebody breaking one of these things unless you're really pounding on it. So um, you should be fine. Just make sure you hold these together real well. Now, we are going to give this a very vigorous, 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 vigorous dry shake. Like I said, the last thing in the world you want is unincorporated egg in your drink. Dinner. 
dry shake there. Now I'm going to toss some ice into the shaker. As always, you're going to want to toss in more ice than you need. Once again, give it a good smash together. All right, once again, we're gonna make sure our shakers are together. Here, the cold is gonna start to hold them together since we've got ice in there. Let's give it a nice, good wet shake. about a little bit here as to whether or not put an ice cube in there. In this case, I'm going to, because I'm making three of the drinks that I'm gonna to taste together, and I'm gonna to try to maintain the temperature here. At home, you probably don't need to add a shake a cube here. And double strain. Now I've got a little more in the in the shaker, but again, I added a uh, a rock in here. If you didn't, this will fit just fine in the rocks glass. All right, and that is our difference eggnog. Now, let's see what Mr. Brooks has to say. All right, next up is our Ezra Brooks eggnog. Now, the one different thing. Uh, they do on this cocktail, and I'm going to follow their instructions as close as possible. They want you to put in the non-alcohol ingredients first and dry shake those alone. So we're going to do that. So we're going to start off with two ounces of milk. And two ounces of heavy cream. This is not diet food. And to be clear, the recipe says uh, four ounces of milk or heavy cream, so I just went half these. For our sweetness, we're gonna put in an ounce of our simple. Once again, not diet food. Of course, it would not be eggnog without an egg. Alrighty. So we are going to toss that in our tin once again. I'm going to give these a real good bash together. Make sure they stay together. And once again, you're doing extremely vigorous. They call for one minute uh, dry shake. One of these days we talk about the Ramos Gin Fizz and how uh, exhausting it can be to shake a drink for an extremely long time. All right, so now, so I'm gonna add our alcohol ingredients. So it calls for two ounces of Ezra, Crooks, Ezra Brooks bourbon cream. Can't talk today. bourbon cream in the shaker. Now this actually calls for Rebel 100. I just happen to have an Ezra Brooks cast strength single barrel. Um, I think that'll give the drink a little more kick. So we are just gonna toss in an ounce. All right, there's some ice in the shaker here. As always, use more ice than you think you need. All right, once your shakers are good and tight together, go ahead and give it another wet shake, and we'll be good to go. Good 
shake on there. The one that struck about this is this is a there's a lot in this drink, so got us a little bit bigger rocks glass for it. As Brooks has spoken, let's see what the uh, people at Death & Co. have to say. Alright, and finally, let's see what Death & Co. have to say uh, with their eggnog out of the cocktail codex. Um, <clears throat> they have a very specific, I think it's a plantation Barbados rum. I like Barbados rum, but I'm going to go with uh, a Real McCoy 5-year. If you go to Total Wine, uh, then Dooley's. Dooley's makes an 8-year that would go great in here. We're just going to go for three quarters an ounce of our Barbados rum. We're going to go for, they also have another specific cognac they're going with, um, which actually brings up kind of an interesting point. When you're dealing with a cocktail with a lot of heavy cream and a lot of other stuff, I probably wouldn't go super high end on your, on your cognacs or your whiskeys. I mean, you're certainly more than welcome to, but this is probably gonna get lost in there. Now they list a sugarcane syrup, a two to one sugarcane syrup. I'm gonna use a Demerara two to one syrup. It's gonna basically be the same thing, except it's a little darker. They call for a uh, vanilla, sim or, excuse me, a vanilla liqueur. I couldn't find that one here. But we have liqueur 43, which is a Spanish vanilla liqueur. I think it's fantastic. They call for a teaspoon. I'm gonna use about an eighth of an ounce. I've never heard anybody complain that there's too much vanilla in their drink. Heavy cream. Of course, we get Mr. Egg involved. Of course, we're gonna have one uncooperative egg, but that's all right. All right, once again, do a dry shake, and hopefully, I have put in some music over the top of me shaking, so you don't just have to listen to me shaking and breathing because that's not great for anyone. All right, once we're going to try to do 30 seconds to a minute. One thing you'll notice right away, volume-wise, this is providing a much smaller drink. Honestly, those probably would be worth two. Uh, there's a lot of volume in those drinks. All right, now we'll do our wet shake. Finally, through the hardest part of these cocktails, which is shaking them for a million years. In the rocks glass. This one has a little bit deeper color, I think. It might be the Demerara syrup. Finally, we have our Death & Co. Cocktail Codex uh, eggnog, and we get to do the best part, which is finally drinking them. 
All right, before I taste, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little nutmeg on top of each one of these. And we're gonna start off with our Difford's eggnog. I said in a recent episode that a lot of times you can skip the garnish because mostly it doesn't add anything. You need to garnish this. Uh, the nutmeg comes at you right away and that's a big part of it. Um, this is a good cocktail. It's got a lot of body to it. Uh, it's a little boozy. Again, we got two and a half ounces of cognac in there. But this shows you why you need to get that egg, not, or you need to get that egg incorporated. Because this is really well incorporated. I'm not getting that eggy flavor. I'm just getting the body from the egg and the body from the heavy cream. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, let's see what Kentucky has to say about the uh, eggnog. Okay, <clears throat> for me personally, I would probably pick the Diffords uh, over the Ezra Brooks, but if you were having a party, this is the one you wanna serve. Um, this is sweet, it is frothy, it is delicious. The eggnog on top is great. You could batch this cocktail. I'd be a little careful with the, with the actual egg, but I'm pretty sure you could batch this cocktail. Everybody who tries this is gonna think you're the best cocktail maker in the world. Yeah, it's great. It tastes like eggnog and chocolate milk, which sounds like they wouldn't be good together, but they very much are. Um, yeah, I was a little reticent on that one. That's good. Um, that, is, that is a crowd pleasing cocktail. All right, let's do Death & Co. Um, yeah, your cocktail connoisseur is gonna wanna go with this. Um, it's a deeper flavor. It's not as frothy. It's, it doesn't have quite as much body as the, other one does, as, as the other ones do. Now, even though we've got a lot of Demerara in there, it still isn't tasting quite as sweet as the Ezra Brooks. Now, the Ezra Brooks, we're using that bourbon cream, and I'm sure there's a lot of sugar in there, so that's where that sweetness is coming from. Um, the difference is good because it's the most simple. Um, probably if you're making these at home for yourself, you'd probably go with the Diffords. Uh, but again, if you're, if you're trying to please a group of bunch of people at a holiday party, definitely go for the Ezra Brooks. Yeah, it's just great. It's got, it's got the best body of any of these, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, again, remember, uh, don't drink too many of these, not just for the alcohol. And by the way, this is not a particularly boozy cocktail either. Um, you can drink a few of these. Um, but there is two ounces of milk and two ounces of heavy cream in there. Um, so it is, you're gonna have to run a little bit to get rid of that one. Um, again, personally, as kind of a cocktail snob, I think the Death & Co is probably the best. It's got a deeper flavor. The rum is bringing out some darker notes to it. You get some oak in there. Yeah. I would go with the Death & Co. If you had a cocktail party, do the Ezra Brooks. Um, and on that bombshell, uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever other holidays you happen to be celebrating. I hope you enjoy them uh, with friends and family and be good to each other and don't yell at people on the internet too much. I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And have a good drink and have a good day.